Formula One award shows. They're awkward, boring, difficult to watch and potentially satanic. I remember later that evening I went to the, to the bathroom and it, Ross Braun was there standing next to me at the urinals and I was thinking, oh, it's absolutely massive to be honest, I think it's my chance to pounce and I need to, uh, need to get in front of him. I was sort of in the corner. It was a late night. I, had a, I think I had a glass of red wine in my hand at, at the time as well. So I was an 11 year old kid. <laughs> God damn! I, I edited that together to make it look bad. George Russell is not the victim of a satanic cult, as far as we know. <laughs> that was at the Autosport Awards, where George Russell picked up a trophy for Moment of the Year because of his amazing victory at the Brazilian Grand Prix. All right, that was a nice moment and everything, but listen to who the other nominations were. Which moments have been nominated? We have Nick de Vries, point scoring for Williams on his F1 debut in Monza. Max Verstappen's record-breaking 14th win of the season in Mexico. And Ross Chastain's incredible ride around the wall at Martinsville in NASCAR. Nick de Vries scoring points in Monza, RIP Latifi. Max Verstappen's record-breaking 14th win of the season, nobody cares. And Ross Chastain's incredible ride around the wall at Martinsville in NASCAR. I didn't know what that was, and then I found out. A championship in Phoenix. Take a look at what he did. I have never seen anything you like that before in my you life. Wide open, around the wall, in three and four at Martinsville. Unbelievable. F f forget about forget about auto spot moment of the year. He should have been awarded the fucking nerve of the year. How is that not a category? And how did that not win moment of the year? So the Milky Bar Kid won a race for the first time? Who gives a shit? This guy defied the laws of physics. So all you have to do to win an award these days is give Ross Braun a handjob at the urinals? <laughs> Speaking of awards going to the wrong people, this is Christian Horner in a tuxedo. And this is the president of the FIA, Mohammed bin Salem. And when the two of them got together at the FIA prize giving ceremony, something beautiful happened. Mohammed was telling jokes, comedy, zingers, banter. It was a car crash. You know, I'll say, I'll say something to Christian. Christian, this cup has nothing to do with the cost cap, okay? So be careful, you know, this is from the FIE, so we are not going to deduct it from your cost cap, okay? No, that's, right. uh, that's, that's very generous, thank you. <laughs> Japan, you said, was controversial. No. The FIA was blamed for the points, but it was not the FIA which made the rules. It was the teams who made the rules, and we were implementing it. So thank you for the... Okay, cut. okay, guys. Yes, <laughs> you see? Let's stay focused. No. Uh, to me, it's very, very clear about the FIA, and we do that. Uh, so thank you very much. Mohammed bin Salem, more like Mohammed's bin salamin margaritas because he was drunk. That's a perfect joke. That's wordplay. But the point is, both of these award shows were boring. And that gave me an idea. Why don't I host my own award show right here in the garage? Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the RPM F1 2022 end of season, thank fuck it's finally over, unofficial but still really important, prize giving ceremony, sponsored by Balenciaga, I support them in this difficult time. Welcome everybody, I am your host, Mohammed bin Mohawk, president of the RPM, I've never worn a suit before, I hate this, I hate this so much. I'm gonna- I can't even put my fucking arm on the door, look at that, I'm gonna rip it. I'm gonna do this like the Oscars, except my show doesn't sit upon a throne of Satanism and pedophilia. A little. And I haven't got any trophies, because I don't have the budget for that, so instead, I made some certificates. And... And we're not gonna be doing any boring categories, like best driver of the year, or best moment of the year. Lame. Instead, I have categories like, why do you have to ruin everything, you slippery little bastard of the year? Fucking... 
what the bloody hell are you playing at, dickhead of the year? And I've thrown up in my own mouth of the year. Categories that matter. But the first category is Sigma Bastard of the Year. This is an award for the most badass, thick shafted, cook making, vagina exploding display of power of the season. In third place, Fernando Alonso at the Belgian Grand Prix. After being involved in a first lap collision with Lewis Hamilton, Fernando Alonso's car was undamaged, and so was his nerve. Because then he slags Hamilton off on the radio, calling him an idiot and saying he only knows how to drive in first. Then, as Hamilton pulled over to the side of the track, Fernando drove past waving his finger, sending Team LH into a nervous breakdown. <laughs> In second place, Kevin Magnussen at the Brazilian Grand Prix. After the Milky Bar kid fucked his Mercedes into the gravel causing a red flag, it was Kevin Magnussen with the fastest time in qualifying. All the cars returned to the pit lane and waited for the session to restart. But then, it starts to rain and the track is getting wetter by the second and so was every woman in Denmark. Because by the time the session did restart, the track was undrivable. Cars went out and then came straight back in, and as the clock ticked down, it slowly became apparent Kevin Magnussen had done the impossible. Dragged that shitbox has to pole position. <laughs> And the winner of Sigma Bastard of the Year is Fernando Alonso at the US Grand Prix. After the safety car restart, Fernando went for an overtake on Lance Stroll. But because Lance Stroll is a disgrace to humanity, he moved at the last second, causing a massive accident. Stroll's tyre explodes, the rear wing gets torn off, he spins in the middle of the straight and retires. But what happened to Fernando? He's flying through the air on two wheels, lands it, slams into the barriers, keeps it in a straight line, drags it all the way back to the pits, and even though the car was damaged and there were bits flying off all over the place, he got back up to seventh. Then, after the race, the FIA gave him a 30 second penalty because of that wing mirror that flew off, Cox. But then Alpine protested the penalty, the FIA backed down, and Fernando gets to keep seventh place. In the official documents, the FIA said the reason why Fernando was allowed to keep seventh is because he is the Sigma Bastard of the Year. <laughs> Congratulations, Fernando. The next category is... Now, that's a lot of damage of the year. This is an award for a lot of damage. In third place, Mick Schumacher at the Monaco Grand Prix. Schumacher lost control going through the swimming pool section, hits the barriers, does a full 360, and then slams into the armco, ripping the car in half. It looked like a big one. However... Hass's technical director, Simone, that is his name, they found most of the parts were still usable. He said the bodywork has been replaced, the Ferrari engine was undamaged, and the only thing that had to be replaced was the external gearbox, a rather unexpected result considering the magnitude of the accident. Estimated cost? Six hundred thousand dollars. No, that's a lot. Wanko. In second place, Mick Schumacher at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Schumacher was on his final run in Q2, but then he dropped it coming out of turn ten, slammed into the concrete barriers, ricocheted across the track, and eventually came to a stop against the opposite concrete barriers. Once again, ripping the car in half. Gunnar Steiner said after the crash, the chassis in itself doesn't seem to be broken. The side impact structure blah 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 I think the cost is still pretty high because all the suspension is gone except the front left blah 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 the rest is just like powder carbon powder estimated damage one million dollars no that's a lot of fuck off and the winner of now that's a lot of damage of the year is 
The Silverstone Hurricane of Shite. Boris Johnson invaded Chinese airspace, flipping Guan Yu Zhou upside down and launching him into the seventh circle of hell. Then Sebastian Vettel rear-ended Alex Albon, spinning him into the wall. Then he got torpedoed by Esteban Ocon. Then he got torpedoed again by Yuki Tsunoda. Then a third plane hit the Pentagon. Then Tower 7 collapsed all on its own. Then America invaded Iraq under the false pretense that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. Five smashed up Formula One cars. $1.5 million. The World Trade Center plus the big hole in the Pentagon, $36 billion. Invading the Middle East to sow the seeds of democracy, $2.4 trillion. That's two, four, and then 11 zeros. No, that's a lot of weapons of mass destruction. However, there's more. While all of that was going on, five protesters ran onto the track and sat down in the middle of the Wellington Strait. These are the same twats that glue themselves to pictures, lie down in the middle of the road blocking traffic, spray government buildings with orange paint. One of them cable tied himself to a goalpost. They do it for attention, and that's what these pricks wanted attention. $2.4 trillion? Yeah, that is a lot of money. But causing a massive distraction so these knobheads didn't get a second of airtime? Priceless. No, that's a lot of f***ing waste of time. And, and the next category is... I've thrown up in my own mouth of the year. And you know what? I'm not going to bother with third, second, and first place with it. It's the Miami Grand Prix. Of course, Miami is disgusting. The fake harbor, the Instagram influencers, the opening ceremony, James Corden, the $28,000 ticket prices. Disgusting! But the worst moment by far was the grid walk, where Martin Brundle interviewed a plethora of celebrities. Cristiano Ronaldo, Barack Obama, Shaquille O'Neal, a social media sensation, a talking lamppost, and somebody called DJ Khaled. We in Miami, this is my home, the best city in the world, and the whole world is here for this beautiful event. F1, family, fun, good energy, superstars, icons. They didn't want us here at F1, but what? God did. God did. <laughs> That's right. Utterly nauseating. Uh, I mean, literally, I literally recoiled while watching it. Congratulations, Miami. You are disgusting. And guess what? Formula One has signed a 10-year contract with Miami to host the Grand Prix until 2031. I, maybe it's wrong to equate these two things, but bear with me. America invaded Iraq because of an act of terrorism, right? And because they thought they had weapons of mass destruction, which they did not. Well, the Miami Grand Prix was an act of terrorism. I was terrified. And they have got weapons of mass destruction because if DJ Fat Tits jumps into a swimming pool, that will cause a tidal wave big enough to wipe out half of civilization. Invade them for the sake of democracy. I hate this jacket. I hate this jacket so much. Swear down, I mean, I'm brave. Why would anybody? Where's all the certificates? Oh, look at the certificates. I swear to God. And the next category is, why do you have to ruin everything, you slippery little bastard of the year? In third place, Paul Deresta for commentating on the French Grand Prix. In second place, Paul Deresta for commentating on the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. In first place, Paul Deresta for commentating on the Azure. Of, of course it's Paul Deresta. Everything he touches turns to lame. And we all know how it started. In 2012, he ruined the end of the World Championship by shagging his Force India into the wall. And what was a thrilling race between Fernando Alonso and Sebastian Vettel ended behind the safety car. Michael Massey would be spinning in his grave. But after that, Paul was hooked. He was addicted to the feeling of ruining Formula One for everybody. And he had to get more. So he became a pundit for Sky Sports F1. And yes, I know it's not healthy to have this amount of animosity towards somebody for commentating on Formula One. And yes, I have said some very mean-spirited things about Paul DeResta this season. 
I've called him a slippery little bastard, a Grand Prix killer, a witch, a fraud, a slob, the worst thing to happen to Scotland since the Dunblane Massacre, an agent of the CCP, a baby harvesting goblin, a globalist mouthpiece, a degenerate sack of anti-human trash, and half Italian. But because it's Christmas, and it's that time of year where you do some self-reflection, having thought about some of the things that I've said about Paul DeResta over this year, I just want to say I stand by them. He is a demon from the pit of hell, and he needs to be exercised. And I don't mean exercised as in he needs to go for a run. I mean exorcised, as in a priest with a Bible and a crucifix performs a ceremony to remove the evil spirits from his soul. The power of Christ compels you! Or Sky Sports F1 could just hire somebody that isn't terrible. But an exorcism is more fun. What's the next category? I swear down, I mean, Anne's grave. 